Welcome to Mount Prospect Public Library's Library Life. I'm Kathy Cushing. Today we'll get in shape at the library with Instant Recess, a brief exercise break offered every weekday afternoon this winter. We'll also learn some simple strategies for overcoming organizing obstacles. And we'll enjoy an energy-packed concert from one of our favorite Super Saturday performers, Jim Gill. But first, let's explore the 2015 Winter Reading Program and find out what's in store for patrons who get wrapped up in reading. The 2015 Mount Prospect Public Library Winter Reading Program invites patrons to cozy up with a great book and get wrapped up in reading. Well, the theme this year is Get Wrapped Up in Reading, and winter is a perfect time to do that when it's icy and snowy outside, and all you want to do is cuddle up with a cup of tea and a good book. We want to celebrate that with our patrons. Reader's Advisor Joyce Brantner outlines how easy it is for adults 18 and over to participate. It's books, ebooks, audiobooks, um, it's basically whatever format you choose. Winter Reading is the easiest of programs that we have at the library. There's no sign-ups, there's no logs to follow. You basically just read what you enjoy, come to the desk, fill out a slip for each book that you read during the month of February, and at the end we draw prizes and give them out. Prizes here in the Adult Services Department are sure to bring comfort to the chilliest of days. This year we have a new Keurig 300 brewing system for your tea, your hot chocolate, your coffee. Um, we also have a couple of cozy baskets with throws and a flowering tea set. We also have another throw that has coffee, books, chocolate. I mean, what more can you ask? And we also have three audiobook prizes for those who really enjoy listening to audiobooks at home or in the car when they commute. We really want to celebrate people's ability to read whatever they enjoy. And we love when patrons come to the desk and they talk about what they're reading and the things that they, they love, even the things that they tried and thought, you know, this just isn't my cup of tea, and that's fine. Um, we just like to have this kind of interactions uh, with the patrons. And also, it just adds some fun to the cold, dark days of February. Gets us through to the spring. Over in the teen zone, our winter reading program features a social media aspect. This year for our winter reading program, we're including our Instagram as a way to win for additional entries to win our weekly gift card drawings. Because we have Instagram, we've had Instagram for about two years now, and we really want teens to be aware of it. Plus, it's a great way to share what you're reading in a social way by taking a picture, tagging it MPPL teen, and then letting everyone see what you're reading this, this winter. Teens who get wrapped up in reading this winter are eligible to win great prizes in a number of fun ways. Teens can fill out these blurbs anytime they're in the library of what they're wrapped up in. And when they do fill out a blurb, they'll get an entry for a weekly gift card drawing. We'll also have a guest game, which was also developed by our Teen Advisory Board. They wanted us to have teen novels covered up and wrapped up in scarves or wrapping paper so you can't see what titles they are. And then um, teens will guess the number of pages. And whoever comes closest or is spot on will win the books as well as a Barnes & Noble gift card. Teens may participate using any number of literary formats, including ebooks, graphic novels, audiobooks, magazines, even school related reads. And we just want to encourage teens, whatever they're reading, to share it with each other so we can, you can find new books that you might like, but also just encourage the love of reading that we know many teens in our community has. The idea of promoting reading through fun-filled activities and prizes continues down in the Youth Services Department, where children 11 and younger are getting wrapped up in a winter reading celebration. We're doing Wrapped Up in Reading, so we are actually doing a party theme and actually talking about holidays that are happening in the month of February. So the first time that they stop in, they will get some coupons special for that. And then they get to do our Guess How Many contest, which is guessing how many candies are in our, our present boxes. And if they guess correctly, they get to take home all the candy. So the kids really love doing that. Here, children complete activity cards to earn up to a prize a day while accumulating chances to win even more. 
It's very easy for them to participate. They just need to come into the Youth Services Desk. They can come in once a day and pick up an activity card and tell us what they're reading. Once they've completed a couple of simple activities, then they'll be able to get a free small prize. And then they also get entered into a weekly drawing. And then it accumulates from there and all of the names we're putting into a, a final drawing for some larger prizes as well. The goals would be to get the kids reading, obviously, and to give an opportunity for the kids to actually tell us about their, what they're reading. I mean, it's helpful for them to recount the stories and also to get them used to the department. I know the activities that we're having are going to help them to explore the department with scavenger hunts and, and maybe explore the websites by looking for different reviews on the website. So it's also going to have that purpose as well. Patrons of all ages can join the 2015 Winter Reading Program and get wrapped up in reading throughout the month of February. For more information, call the Mount Prospect Public Library at area code 847-2535-675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. If the mere thought of organizing a file cabinet or closet stops you in your tracks, you are not alone. Joining me today on the Library Live to discuss her library program, Overcoming Organizing Obstacles, is business and home organizer Amber Sanchez. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Let's start out by talking a little bit about your background as an organizer. I uh, did not come out of the womb as a perfectionist, I'll say that. Um, I definitely, my mother will tell you I was not an organized child, but um, I went to, got my degree in business management, knew I wanted to own my own company, um, was hired by a Fortune 500 company to manage 21 stores. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, through that experience, I have realized day after day the benefits of being organized. I had two stores out of the 21 that operated like well-oiled machines, first in, first out. They had low product in the back. Their sales were great. Um, and 19 stores that <laughs> did not really make that mark. Um, it was very stressful going into the 19, very relaxing going into the two that were organized. So kind of living through uh, corporate disorganization mm -hmm. really fueled my passion for not only learning how to, how to organize, um, now I'm certified to be an organizer and I'm teaching others how to organize because um, after four years of being in corporate America and seeing how organizing can save time, mm -hmm. save energy and save money, reduce stress. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of benefits to organizing. Oh, um, of course. That's what, what brought me here today. Well, and, and your uh, program is called Overcoming Organizing Obstacles. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about some of the obstacles that most people have in their way with regard to organizing. Yes. Most are um, in the mind. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily physical. There are physical obstacles, which I'm not going to get into as much, but um, three obstacles that I'm really faced with frequently mm -hmm. are being overwhelmed, busyness, just having no time, going from one thing to one thing to one thing, and um, the indecisiveness, just not knowing what do I do with this, where do mm -hmm. I put it, the decision-making process behind being organized. And I think all of us can relate to that, needless to say. Yeah. So let's tackle each of those um, obstacles at a time. So let's yeah. talk a little bit about um, being overwhelmed. Yeah. How do you, how do you combat that? <clears throat> you combat it by, um, it really depends on the size of your project. I mean, if you have a little project, you could be overwhelmed. If you have a large project, you could be overwhelmed. But it's really about priorities. Mm -hmm. So um, let's just say, for example, somebody who has a New Year's resolution of saying, you know what, I'm going to be organized this year. Maybe mm -hmm. a mom, she sends her kids off to school and um, says, I'm going to tackle the kitchen. And she doesn't really have a process. She just kind of takes everything out of everywhere and lays it all out and then realizes that that took a lot more time <laughs> than she expected. And she gets distracted <laughs> and then the kids are coming home from school and everything is still out and then she just puts everything back the way that it was just because there was just no plan, um, no priority. You just have to take a step back before you organize and put together <clears throat> what do I want to accomplish? Mm -hmm. You know, like what's really, what do I really not like in my kitchen? Because mm -hmm. in every space, just kitchen for example, 
um, there's probably things that run really well in your kitchen right. that you're like, I don't want to change that. Mm -hmm. We don't want to mess up any systems of organization that are already currently working great. Right. We just want to fix the ones that are driving you crazy. Well, what's driving you crazy? So we have to start with that, outline that, make it a priority, and then tackle that one at a time <laughs> versus uh, all in one shot. So make it a couple of little projects <laughs> rather than one overwhelming yes, project. Yes, yes. A little, a little project at a time, especially if you're not an organizing expert. Um, I can guarantee you nine times out of 10 people underestimate the time that it's going to take mm -hmm. to do any organizing course, project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if they tackle a whole room or a large closet thinking that it's gonna take them a half an hour <laughs> to an hour, I can guarantee you it's gonna take longer than that. Okay, let's so. talk a little bit about indecisiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, what goes, what stays, where does it go when it goes? Um, so tell us a little bit about how do you tackle that particular yeah, obstacle. Absolutely. Sometimes what you have really is just needs to be recycled mm -hmm. or really is just garbage and talking about the different options that you can be like, okay, I don't want to take the time to sell it, you know, I mm -hmm. don't want to donate it, but it did come from, you know, this particular person who I'm, sh you know, wouldn't be offended if I gave it back to them mm -hmm. or would re-gift it in some way so that somebody else could be blessed by what you have. Right. I get, I get indecisive with regard to sentimentality. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, I don't want to give this away because I remember when I got it or who gave it to mm -hmm. me. And yeah. you know, that's something that I think a lot of people have to deal with yeah. as well. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about people who are busy. And I, I just can't tackle that because I'm just way too busy. <laughs> How do you overcome that obstacle? That one is more difficult, um, especially if you're working all the time just in a maybe a you're, you're running a business and you're just going from one thing to another and you can't slow down because your business and um, but I will say that if you don't make the time to get organized um, you're never going to be organized. It is interesting because there is something about organizing a, a space and then coming into that space and feeling so good about yes. the space and yourself etc. Yes. You know. So I know that you're a home and business organizer mm -hmm. Are people who are organized in their business very often, uh, it, does it go hand in hand? Do people Not who are organized in business, be, or are they terribly organized at home? Or <laughs> can, can you be like really organized in business and have a terribly, you know, yes. disheveled home? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people run their business like, I mean, just to, to the T, but then when they get home, they're just... Maybe they spend all of their time keeping their business, you know, going, looking great, you know, profitable, but then they come home and they just don't have the energy to make decisions anymore. And then mm -hmm. they do get overwhelmed and, you know, they want to take the time at home to just relax versus, it's okay, it. let's tackle this project. And, you know, like we don't, I mean, as humans, we don't have a constant, you know, energy flow we have to have downtime so certainly we can all understand yeah. that right yeah um, what are some of your favorite tools with regard to organizing because I know there are whole stores devoted mm -hmm. to this so what are some of your favorite there are tools? I really enjoy um, any Rubbermaid system mm -hmm. for closets I'll say that they are probably one of the lowest cost options and easiest to install so you can buy a Rubbermaid organizing closet kit for around 125 to 150 dollars mm -hmm. and transform your closet which is a pretty good price mm -hmm. um, I enjoy the, it's called the little black dress it can be found at the container store it's twenty dollars and it hangs in your closet and you can do necklaces and rings and bracelets and you can see it on both sides you can pick out your jewelry really easily mm -hmm. it hangs like another dress in your closet Wow I really enjoy um, the, it's something that goes on the wall and uh -huh. it's flat. Uh -huh. It's a collapsible hanging system. It's for those of us that want, maybe in the laundry room where you don't have a lot of space but you don't want to dry your clothes, so then it pops out and okay. you can hang your clothes to dry and then when you're done it can go, go right, right back, back against the wall. So it's important to invest Easy in fix. a few of these tools just yes. to to make your life a little easier. And they're not expensive. The, I think this the unit that would go on your wall for the adjustable hanging system is about fifteen dollars. You know, twenty dollars for the little black dress, one 
hundred dollars for an organizing system. So just do it. Yes. Right? Just, just do, do it. it. Just do it. Now I know you have a four easier. step process yes. for organizing any space. So yes. let's go through those four steps just sure. to make our life a little easier, yes. right? Yes. Four steps. So the first step in the organizing process process is categorizing. Mm -hmm. So that step is you walked into a disorganized closet, let's say, let's just keep it small. <laughs> we'll go to a closet, a little closet, maybe your bedroom closet. And so the first step would be putting shirts with shirts, pants with pants, skirts with skirts, socks mm -hmm. with socks, it's the categorizing process. So right. once you go through all of that, then you can uh, categorize it more, do subcategories. So in the shirts, you could do t-shirts versus long sleeves versus uh, maybe business shirts, workout shirts, mm -hmm. the different categories that go along with that. Mm -hmm. So once you've subcategorized all of your categories, <laughs> then you can decide what space they best fit back into in your current system or how to change your current system in a way that you don't, that would improve. Simple and very smart. Put it back. Okay. So, so that's category. So that's, <laughs> once you have everything categorized and subcategorized, then you have to limit Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Which is what a lot of people think, you know, um, organizing is all about just getting rid of everything you have, which isn't necessarily true. Right. Um, organizing is bringing to the forefront, which maybe you didn't know what you had, so that you can use it. And um, so limiting. So going through your closet, let's say it was completely disheveled to begin with, but once you have some categorized and subcategorized everything, then you can see, oh, I have 17 black skirts I that I didn't know. That, right? <laughs> I don't need 17 <laughs> black skirts. And since I'm going to put them back into the closet in an organized way that I'll be able to find, I'm only going to keep my seven favorite black skirts, you mm -hmm. know, doing something, whatever that number is for you, to limit. And then we talk about containing. So then how are they going to be contained in the closet. Are they all going to be hung? Are they going to be hung on a multi-use hanger? Multiple skirts on the same one? Are they going to be folded? You know, what does that look like in your specific system? It's a custom system for every single client. It's always different. So mm -hmm. how does it look in your space? Right. And then labeling ah, is the last it. one. Mm -hmm. So um, in closets, some people are just like, no, I don't want any labeling in my closet. So sometimes it's more optional. But some people are like, yes, label everything, label the shelves, label, um, you know, the drawers, the inside of the drawers can be labeled. And so you don't forget. So it's sure. very easy to remember, especially after the process is done. You don't want to be disheveled looking for something that you <laughs> yes. could have labeled. And yes, you can remember like, where did I put my workout clothes? Oh, yeah, this is the drawer that they are supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. And uh, it keeps the process easy, especially with so many things in life that we have to remember mm -hmm. where we put our stuff shouldn't necessarily be one of them when there's a really easy fix of just labeling it so your brain can kind of relax and be like that's where I put it perfect so yeah. these are overcoming organizing obstacles I know that you're coming back later in the month yes. to talk a little bit about organizing 101 how, how will that be different it'll be different we'll talk um, maybe less about obstacles specifically and more about organizing in general mm -hmm. so maybe um, do's and don'ts of organizing <laughs> and um, it might have more to do with question and answers you know people have you know broader questions about you know this is my specific situation or this is you know the problem that I'm running into and uh, do more question and answers. Perfect. Yeah. So you have two chances to get yourself organized during the month of February. Yes. I want to thank you so much for being with me today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. For more information on overcoming organizing obstacles, Organizing 101, or any upcoming Mount Prospect Public Library event, call the library at area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. Winter is the perfect time to concentrate on projects like organizing our homes and getting in shape. Let's peek in on a library offering called Instant Recess, a healthy exercise break for patrons and staff members of all ages. It's 4 o'clock on a weekday afternoon here at the Mount Prospect Public Library. Time to kick up your heels and get those heartbeats racing by joining in on a 10-minute exercise break called Instant Recess.
premise is to bring um, exercise and healthy living into the workplace, but in the library we have the unique opportunity to focus on employees and patrons at the same time. So we're able to hold it in a public area, invite patrons, but if staff wants to join as well, it's a good way to do both. Head of Youth Services Mary Smith brought the idea of Instant Recess Home from a PLA conference. I went um, to the Public Library Association conference and this was one of the presentations there. The founder of Instant Recess is Tony Yancey and she's been implementing this in workplaces throughout America, um, but it also translates well into the library because you can have the patrons do it as well as um, employees. Patrons and staff members congregate for Instant Recess in the Harold Weary Genealogy and Local History Room located at the center of the library's second floor. It's up in the genealogy area because that was a nice big space to do it, but it's also in the middle of the library, so it kind of draws attention and people can see it and um, come and join us as they notice. It's refreshing. I, I came in yesterday and I was working my night, so one of the first things I did was instant recess, and I was kind of dragging from my personal day and I came in and did that and I just was ready to go. I was ready to get back on it and have a lot, have a lot of work and a lot of great interactions here. Teen Outreach Librarian Barbara Fitzgerald joins Mary Smith in facilitating this week's Instant Recess, which has a bit of a dance theme. I am not a great exerciser, but I knew uh, we could have a lot of fun and get up and get our heartbeat going by listening to some music and mashing together some popular dance songs like the Hokey Pokey, the Cha Cha Slide, and a little YMCA and just have some fun and move around. We'll have a different um, theme each week depending on the presenter. Um, if the presenter is interested in yoga, it might have a yoga theme or Tai Chi or um, music and dance, whatever. And we're having teams of presenters do it, so it'll usually be two or three staff people at a time. A lot of fun, a lot of laughs, and people saying, oh, I did feel invigorated to go back to work, or people in the library saying, oh, I was so excited, it was a great break from my studying. One of the library's strategic goals is to um, have patrons think of the library as the third place, which is, you know, an important place after home or work or school. And so, um, since they spend so much time here, this is a nice way to just give them an opportunity to integrate their exercise in here as well. Instant Recess takes place every weekday afternoon through the end of March. For more information, call the library at area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. Earlier in the show, we learned about the library's 2015 winter reading program. If you would like some suggestions on novels to help you get wrapped up in reading this year, our staff, as always, is on hand to help out. Now here's Reader's Advisory Assistant Nancy Vincent with her best book pick from the Adult Services Department. Laurel Field, a grand old estate north of Chicago, is the centerpiece of Rebecca McKay's clever novel, The Hundred Year House. The book begins in 1999 with descendants of the well-heeled DeVore family. Z. DeVore and her husband Doug, both academics, are living temporarily in the coach house. Doug hopes to do research on an obscure poet who lived at Laurel Field when it was an artist's colony in the 1920s, but Z's mother is surprisingly protective of whatever files and artifacts might be in the attic. The narrative travels backward in time, leaping to 1955, 1929, and 1900, revealing Laurel Field's complicated past and its eccentric occupants. In this reverse chronological order, echoes from the past and future are well crafted and the engaged reader will be rewarded. With its rich detail, fine prose, and dark humor, The Hundred Year House is a unique and satisfying read. Recommendations from the Adult Services Department this month highlight eccentric characters in grand settings. The Last Summer of Camper Downs by Elizabeth Kelly is a rollicking novel about a dysfunctional family's 1972 summer spent in a Cape Cod compound. In Bellwether Rhapsody by Kate Raculia, a group of talented high school musicians and their chaperones descend upon a huge once grand hotel in the Catskills for a music festival on the anniversary of a shocking crime. 
In the suspenseful novel Rooms by Lauren Oliver, a troubled family arrives in the mansion of their recently deceased patriarch, only to find it is haunted by ghosts. A Sudden Light by Garth Stein is an atmospheric novel narrated by a teenage boy who embarks upon a quest to learn more about a haunted mansion in the Pacific Northwest, as well as his own family's secrets. And An Evening of Long Goodbyes by Paul Murray features colorful characters at a crumbling seaside estate near Dublin and a 24-year-old pampered man who is about to be given a serious shake-up. Recommendations from the Youth Services Department this month are stories surrounding the tragedy of Hurricane Katrina. Ninth Ward by Jewel Parker Rhodes focuses on a 12-year-old girl with the ability to see spirits who weathers the storm along with her adopted grandmother. In St. Louis Armstrong Beach by Brenda Woods, a young boy faces unexpected challenges while trying to rescue a local stray dog in the wake of Hurricane Katrina. In Upside Down in the Middle of Nowhere by Julie T. Lamana, a 10-year-old girl finds her birthday plans, family, and city in shambles after Hurricane Katrina brings destruction and tragedy. I Survived Hurricane Katrina 2005 by Lauren Tarshis follows the plight of a boy who safely waits out Hurricane Katrina at home with his family, only to be swept away by floodwaters and forced to fend for himself. And in Buddy by M. H. Herlong, a family facing Hurricane Katrina must evacuate their home and leave their special three-legged dog behind. Finally, here's youth programming and outreach assistant Barb Mack with her best book pick from this department. It is the last week's of summer vacation and 12-year-old Zane Dupree finds himself traveling with his dog Bandy to New Orleans to meet his deceased father's grandmother, Miss Trissy. The visit starts off great until they hear that Hurricane Katrina is heading their way. Miss Trissy and Zane follow the orders to evacuate, but while stuck in traffic on the church van, Bandy hops out of the window and Zane runs out to catch him. Bandy leads, leads Zane all the way back to Miss Trissy's house just as the hurricane hits. This starts a series of suspenseful events. Just as Zane thinks that the worst is over having survived the storm alone, the levees break, sending him rushing to the attic away from the rising waters. Besides the physical effects of the storm, he also experiences racial discrimination, watches as looting takes place, and sees people desperate for help, which is very slow in coming. He also encounters the courage and generosity of people who risk their lives to help others to safety. If you like suspenseful, realistic fiction, you will love this book, Zane and the Hurricane, A Story of Katrina by Rod Philbrick. Mount Prospect Public Library Super Saturdays feature educational entertainment for the entire family. Let's enjoy a concert from a favorite reoccurring performer here, Jim Gill. Oh, we must face the fact an award-winning author and musician, Jim Gill is on a mission to make family playtime a staple ingredient in the lives of the children his work encounters. My graduate studies are in child development, so it's the focus for, for me is always all of the things that we help children learn when the adults and the children are playing together. And of course that depends on the child, right? It depends on the age of the child that's here, uh, the ability level of the child. But the wonderful thing is when adults engage in the play with them, they always take it up you know, to the next level. So it might be a rhyming game, it might be a, a self-regulation, self-control kind of experience. And what's wonderful about these concerts is that it gives the families that kind of experience together. This Super Saturday presentation features many of Gill's most popular songs and highlights a very special 20th anniversary. 20 years ago, I released my first recording on, you can see that it was 20 years ago, LP record. Uh, so it's funny, Jim Gill sings the sneezing song and other contagious tunes. The American Library Association gave it one of its notable Children Recordings Award. So since that time, I have released six CDs in total. And, uh, and a, a couple of picture books as well for kids and families. For me, because I write games, I create games, games are really only 
meaningful if they're played. <laughs> so for me, the fact that parents and teachers, librarians in their story times, uh, child care providers, that they use my songs in their work or at home. The fact that people actively all over the country sing my songs and play my games together, that's the benefit to me. It just it makes me want to keep making up more. Libraries are my favorite places to sing uh, for a couple of reasons. One, people who go to libraries, they're happy to come in and sit and play together. You know, they're not expecting a show, they're expecting it's at the library, so this is going to be a family experience. Number two, uh, they have my CDs and books at the library, so you can check after the concert, every family can walk out and, you know, check out a CD or book and bring it home. Absolutely free, which is wonderful. Super Saturday's Jim Gill is just one example of the many entertaining, informational, and educational events featured here at the Mount Prospect Public Library every month. Don't miss any library programs you'd like to experience. Here's a list of events scheduled in January and February. Reservations are strongly recommended. For more information regarding these events, call area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. You'll also find a listing and description of all upcoming Mount Prospect Public Library events in your library newsletter. Preview. We just learned about Instant Recess, an exercise break featured weekday afternoons here at the library all winter long. With this in mind, our Library Life camera today asks the question, what is your exercise of choice and why? Here are some responses. I use the treadmill. It's just a good way in this weather to get some exercise. In the summer, I like to be outside walking and those kinds of things. Just find it enjoyable. I like the ecliptico because um, you, use, you do upper and body and it's um, cardio. Exercising itself in itself is kind of boring, but if I had to pick some playing a sport like racquetball or basketball, I'd much prefer that. Just because it's, I think it's a better all-around workout than just working or focusing on one particular thing. That wraps up this edition of Library Life. For more information on any of the Mount Prospect Public Library services and events highlighted here, call area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. And don't forget to sign up for this year's winter reading program and get wrapped up in reading throughout the month of February.